Hi everyone, and I'm going to go through the notebook of how we can use knowledge graphs as context to answer queries. So we will compare a few approaches. The first approach is without any context or knowledge graph, and that is actually the worst performing because the LM itself doesn't really have the information. The second approach will be using knowledge graphs only. The third is using text only. And then after that, I'll go through a certain implementation of this graph QA uh, using the strict JSON framework that addresses some of the issues of Langchain's implementation. So firstly, let's go through like how we, let's just run the notebook. So over here, you just need to have your own key here. You can actually use the notebook as well. So if we ask GPT this question, who, when did Apple announce the Mac and Cheese Pro? So, you know, this is fictional. So it does not have this knowledge, okay? It, Apple has not announced this product. So this is an example that shows that without the right context, okay, the large language model may not be able to answer certain queries, especially in specialized domains where its native weights do not have this kind of information readily available. Hence, the need for some stuff like retrieval augmented generation, where we condition the query on some context, like certain documents relevant to it. Okay, so we can actually condition on the knowledge graph as this context. So let's take a look, how do we do this? We use the Langchain Graph QA, all right, chain, all right? And this basically does a few steps. The first step is from a certain context, like a text context, it basically um, few short promises like saying, I want a subject, I want a relation, I want the predicate, all right? So this basically does a triplet for the knowledge graph, something like this, like Nevada is a state, you know, something. So these prompts aren't that great because you look at this, like it's a state in the US, it's also number one producer of Go in US. Okay, and the output is Nevada is a state, okay, but Nevada is nowhere in the example here. Then over here is like, I'm going to the store. The output is none. So I think the few short examples here are not that great. Okay, it could be better by incorporating more and more, like um, more expressive kind of stuff. Like over here, you should say, I'm going to store. So I'm, the relation is going to, and then store is the, is the object. So yeah, these are some stuff that I think Langchain could improve on, but let's see how we, actually, how we do next after that. Um, what they do is they'll process the query and extract the entities, okay? And after they extract the entities, they use the entities to retrieve the relevant parts of the knowledge graph to ground the context, all right? And this is the code that is done in Langchain, okay? And lastly, okay, so there's some issues with this also, like if your entities are not an exact match, sometimes you may not be able to prune the right paths. Like for example, if Mac and Cheese Pro is is spelled as Mac and Cheese without the pro, sometimes you may not be able to extract it if you just use a matching directly like that, all right? So next we can use these triplets to condition the um, to condition the language model and then ask it to give the um, answer the question. So let's see how this is done. So firstly, let's take a look at the, this is the context that I've in, in, invented. So this is Apple announced the Mac and Cheese Pro in 2025. It proved a big hit. Apple gave Cheese a rousing ovation in 2026 after he invented the Mac and Cheese Pro in 2024. Orange created a competing product called the Orange and Cheese Pro. Its price was slightly higher at 5,000 compared to Apple's 4,000. So actually, this is quite a difficult thing because like Cheese is a name, <laughs> okay, it's not a hood. Like Apple is also a company's name, Orange is a company's name. So you know you need to kind of figure this out and it's not an easy thing. And we have a lot of dates here. So you can see how Langchain did, like they did Apple Mac and Cheese Pro announce. That's good. Apple Cheese gave. So this is not that great because like I gave, Apple gave Cheese something, but what is it? So it got truncated. The knowledge graph got truncated halfway. Apple gave ovation, but to who? So this is something that I think right now the extraction of the entities are not that great yet. All right. Okay. Mac and Cheese Pro 4,000 price. Oh, that's, that's okay. That's good. Orange, Orange and Cheese Pro created this. All right. So this is a good relation. Orange and Cheese Pro, 5,000 price. That's great also. So most of the entities are, the knowledge graph triplet, triplets are, are extracted properly. The only issue is that you look at all these dates here. These dates are all missed out. And this will be crucial because the question is, when did Apple announce the Mac and Cheese Pro? All right, so we already see that we can get the triples. Okay, and we can then do a plot graph. So this uses this um, NX package. You can see the NX package is here. 
from network X, okay, and you can generate a graph using these triplets by displaying the nodes and the relations. So let's take a look at how um, how the graph looks like. So this is the graph I created, like man, cheese bro, price is 4,000, orange and cheese bro, price is 4,000, and all these are great. So you can see like a lot of things, you end up with stuff like sync notes over here that that like price, for example, is an object that's referenced by a lot of things. You will end up with sync notes like that. And all these like object names here will be the source notes. And you can see all this, you have essentially represented your free text into a more structured graph, which you can use graph parsing algorithms to extract the information from. So that's quite powerful. All right. But again, the Langchain implementation of this is missing out certain stuff. Later, we'll see how we can improve it. So let's run the graph QA chain. And this basically extracts out the entities from the question, like when did Apple invent the Mac and Cheese Pro? So the entities will be Apple and Mac and Cheese Pro. And this will be the context, okay, that is generated based on the, the triplets. So it's like Apple announced the Mac and Cheese Pro because the, so you extract Apple, you extract Apple gave ovation and you extract Mac and Cheese Pro cost 4,000. So you can see all these are, are extracted out. And we then ground this as the context so this is actually similar to retrieval augmented generation, just that the retrieval is done across the knowledge graph instead of your documents. Okay. And then you can see that um, it did, did not get the, the dates. So if you don't store it in the knowledge graph, so there are two sources of, of error. One is if you don't store the triplet in the knowledge graph, and two is you don't extract the right triplets. So both of this length chain will have some issues with this. So you can see that it does not have the information, and so it gives a generic response. Like, it announced the Mac and Cheese Pro recently. Right, so let's see how this is done using like just context and question. All right, and then like you can ask it to think step by step and so on. You can see it got the answer. So sometimes conditioning by text alone is great. <laughs> you might be asking me, why not we just do text? And the answer is if we just do text only, sometimes we might miss out certain things because if we use like OpenAI embeddings to embed this entire text, Sometimes you have miss out certain entities like Mac and Cheese Pro, Apple, you know, it's not directly embedded in the embeddings itself. So we need to have different forms of embeddings, like from broad level embeddings to more specific embeddings. And it's not very natural in the OpenAI embeddings framework, because if you embed the whole paragraph, you know, you're going to miss out certain things. So if you could express this whole thing in knowledge graphs and extract over it, that will be much more powerful for retrieval augmented generation using a knowledge graph. Right, we can also use the um, like context question approach and just do a check completion on the GPT itself without Langchain and you get the same answer, right? So, so it's great. So this shows that actually uh, context condition is good. We just need to condition the knowledge graph better. So now I shall introduce this strict JSON framework. It's actually my framework. Uh, you can look at the video for the rough, uh, rough idea of how this works. But the idea is that given a, like a system prompt, which is like, the chat GPT system prompt, what you want chat GPT to do. Okay, you give a user prompt, like what's the user input or like what's the specific query you want to get. And you can get like the output format in a JSON format. You can say the labels like sentiment and the description of the output, like the type of sentiment or tense, type of tense. I mean, you can also give a list and it will choose one from the list, right? You can do classification. So strict JSON format, I like this a lot because I didn't like OpenAI functions. So this was created as an alternative. So let's see how we can do the graph QA using the strict JSON framework. So first, instead of a very lengthy prompt in LangChain, I just simply say you are knowledge graph builder, form object, relation object. Yeah, I keep it as generic as possible. I ask it to include dates, okay? Because this was something that was missed out by LangChain. Okay, of course we can fine tune this a bit more. Okay, I created this in about 10 minutes, so this can be better. Okay, we give some example input output to view short ground it like here john built a house in 2019 we have john built house and house built in 2019 okay so in the end we output the knowledge graph with the list of relations so let's see what is the knowledge graph that's output over here so we have this apple announced mac and cheese pro good mac and cheese pro announced in 2025 great they got the date apple proof big hit okay this is not not that great because it should be mac and cheese pro proof big hit so like inter sentence stuff is not done that well yet Apple gave cheese. Again, this is not like this truncated. Cheese rousing ovation in 2026. So actually, if these two combine, you get the full context. So it's, it's quite good already. Cheese invented man cheese pro. Yes. Man cheese pro invented in 2024. Not bad. Orange created orange and cheese pro. Yep. Orange and cheese pro price 5,000. Apple price 4,000. So this again has some issue because 
it's not Apple that's the price of 4,000, it's the mac and cheese growth that is the price of 4,000. So there's some work that needs to be done here. Um, but we can see how the knowledge graph looks like over here. It is way more informative than the Langchain one. Second, what we do is then we pass through this knowledge graph and we basically ask it to say output only the relations relevant to the question. So it, it extracted Mac and Cheese Pro here and announced in 2025. Yeah, I made it like that. Instead of like saying extract entities and then pass through the knowledge graph to extract all the entities related. Um, because sometimes you might misspell like Mac and Cheese Pro, you we misspell as Mac Pro or something like that. But you still want to extract the relevant stuff. Okay, so let's see how the past knowledge graph looks like. So this is that Apple announced Spanish Cheese Pro is announced in 2025. Then we can just say we use the past knowledge graph here to answer the question. Answer, put no info. So we can do this here and we can see that it got 2025. There we go. So this is just an illustration of how we can do knowledge graph passing uh, using this strict JSON framework. I think there's a lot of potential here to make very generic knowledge graphs, even more flexible and generic ones than the current ones, because we do have a very powerful large language model now. We can pass the knowledge graph to make it context dependent. So each of the nodes not only have meaning itself in itself, it has meaning based on its parent nodes and everything in the hierarchy. So I'm quite interested to create a new kind of knowledge graph that is context dependent. And yeah, I'll update you once I've created it. And I think knowledge graphs are a very powerful way to represent information. And if you can represent them well and pass through them well, this will be very, very powerful for retrieval augmented generation. And yeah, so that's all for today and signing off and see ya.